Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for one more episode of our Python tutorials. Uh, this series will be now uh, especially for our QD Python library because it's become so big people don't really cannot grasp what it's capable of and it can really help you doing many tasks where you usually use post processors which are just way too much for uh, many manipulations or data extraction or everything. So this sh should be much faster using this library for the some tasks. Of course we cannot do mashing and stuff like this. So, But for many things this already suffices. Now today we'll be covering key files which are just Alistana input files and we will drop right in. So we open an interactive uh, Python console and what I want to read is I want to read this Python, uh, Python, this uh, key file here, which is an LSDynA input file, like I mentioned. And what you usually have, of course, are these keywords noted by star something. And uh, then there's some comments sometimes in between. And then, of course, you have the data, the key cards, or cards, like they say it. Um, to say the library itself does not actually uh, entirely parse these keywords. The mesh data, yes, if you want, but usually what it does is it sees these um, these uh, blocks here, like uh, you see them here, like lines. Okay, so it's just saving these lines, and you, it provides really uh, comfortable means to manipulate these fields or set stuff. And the reason why we build it that way is because first of all, the manual we don't want to encode the whole manual into it and unfortunately the data format is not really generic to kind of yeah do it in a universal kind of way but nonetheless uh, this is already the, you can you can do a lot of stuff there you can uh, manipulate the files quite easily and the most important thing is everything gets preserved like if you read in this file I will show you and you write it again it will be identical in everything and that's really important because I just want to make a few changes and want to have the exact same files. And it's really cool if you can preserve comments like this. Um, this is just really, really comfortable. So this is something uh, I've been missing a lot otherwise. Here we go. So uh, first of all, we got to import our Dyna library from the QDCAE environment. Just do everything because we want it all. Then we go here and open a key file object. And of course we need to give it the file path to the actually uh, file. We read it in and it cannot find the file for whatever funny reason. It's simple, not sample. Here we go. Okay, so it's already in the memory. Of course it's small, so uh, we don't care. And as you can see, uh, when you type keyfile.keys, we can see what kind of keywords are inside but I will not be handling keywords here it will be a topic in the next video so at this point um, we just have these keywords and they're kind of seen as these lines here just strings but sometimes you also want to have access to the to the mesh um, you want to check the mesh maybe or you just want to add more mesh stuff it's important to note here that we mostly support we only support mesh adding so if you want to add a node no problem we do not m support mesh deletion at any point you cannot even delete this keyword here everything regarding mesh if you parse the mesh here um, you need first uh, like del deletion no insertion yes so here we go um, we do not uh, we didn't parse the mesh yet but what we can actually do to do this is just we parse the mesh with parse mesh, mesh equals true. Um, only parse the mesh if you really uh, need the data structure in the rear. Uh, you can then access the data mesh similar to a D3 plot, which has the same API for accessing the mesh in the rear. The only thing why I'm mentioning is parsing the mesh takes time and you simply don't want to waste it. And of course, if you got a number here, like one, uh, it might uh, change when you write the file again because of floating point uh, number precision. So your numbers might be a little bit off after writing it in terms of floating point precision. But 
if you don't really require to parse the mesh, never do that. That's just the mesh that I want to do here. And, oh, I did already, again, do the sample thing. Uh, and I want to parse the mesh, and what it's saying is, okay, I could not find node with ID2. Um, and this is simply happening because um, our beam here, it uses a node 2, which is not here in the node block. But I know my data, of course, very well. I set it up this way. The node is one of the includes. And actually, it didn't load um, the includes either. So you have to specify this also. Why do I well, like uh, automatically disable it? Because, of course, it takes uh, quite some time if you have big includes. So you do not want to do this if you don't require it to. So we set load includes equals true. We load it and everything is fine. What you can do is, for example, if you check whether the mesh is parsed, you can check, for example, how many nodes are in the file. And we see there are five. Here is one in the include. And there are four here, so everything is fine. And um, yeah, that's kind of like everything around it. Uh, also note that the other include file here is encrypted. Yeah, it's not saying because it's binary, but it's encrypted, so it's just gibberish and this include file here it's actually skipped by the library it can detect uh, whether a file is encrypted and simply skips it so in terms of opening a file here is not a lot of magic um, but be aware only parse the mesh if you really want to do it and if you kind of uh, want to load includes you can do that and you can get by the way these includes through keyfile.get includes and then you get uh, multiple key files back as a list which are the children of this file. But I will do also include handling in another tutorial. So see you next time.